Good evening, good evening, good afternoon, good morning to some people. This is Pastor Jay with Anointed Radio, and we're going to start in our normal fashion, and our normal fashion is with a scripture and a prayer. Our scripture we're coming out of is Micah 7 and 18, and it says, Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgive the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. God, you show mercy. You give us new grace and mercy every morning. So, God, we just thank you for that. We just come today and just want to say thank you. There's some things that we've been through. There's some places that we've we've gone. There's some things that we've done. And, God, you, you've been there. You've helped us. You, you showed us the way. And, God, we just thank you and we praise you for all that. So, Dear Father God, we just ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, enlarge the territory of Anointed Radio. God, remove any stumbling blocks, remove any attacks that might have come against us, God. God, let us be able to come as one unit on one accord as we follow the vision, as we follow you in our journey, God. So, God, we ask you to be able to let us be able to reach the unreachable, teach the unteachable, and even be able to touch the person with the most hardest heart, God, to be able to, to say, what can I do to be saved? God, bless every listener under the sound of my voice so that they can be able to start hearing from you. They can start seeing your miraculous ways, God, that they can see their purpose, God, that they can be able to let go of their transgressions, that the, of all the things of grudges and unforgiveness, God, that they could be able to be whole, God, and that you could be able to come and show up and show out in their life. God, enlarge the territory of Anointed Radio to be able to reach new airwaves, new networks, new radio stations, new podcast platforms, and all of the above so that we could be able to spread the gospel as you mandated. So, God, we just thank you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We said it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jay. And like always, I got something to say. You can follow me at Anointed Jaylon on all social media platforms, Clubhouse, um, Instagram, Twitter, um, all them social media platforms, and get my music at um, all digital music streaming platforms. Uh, Jesus, you make me happy. Renew my praise. My team rep, Jesus. Um, slip away and wake up bless you can get all those things on all those digital music platforms with that being said we're going to go ahead and bring in our 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 host um in absence of who we have today prophetess is is not going to be here but make sure you go look up forever uh forever Lee Creations on social media or Tish on social media on Facebook and Clubhouse. Prophetess Tish Shear. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring everybody up. We got Ben Zelly. We have Miss Brittany Marley, related to Bob Marley. And, <laughs> and we have everybody's favorite auntie, Dr. Marvinetta Clay, the love child. Go ahead and tell everybody where y'all could be found. What's up, everybody? I am Brittany Marley, and you can find me on Instagram at I am Brittany Marley. And you can also find me at Testimony Tuesday with Brittany and Kelly dot dot com to hear some amazing testimonies. Yes, yes. Um it's uh, Benzel underscore Washington1993 on Instagram. Shout out to all the 90s babies, working for the 90s babies. Um, I, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I do a podcast with my wife called A Kiss the Kids Goodnight Podcast with my wife, wife Valerie. Uh, we talk about all types of marital things, um, uh, problems, issues, loving, uh, situation, uh, trauma, like we're going to talk about today as well. But, uh, come follow us. Uh-oh. Dr. Clay, you're on mute. Well, there we go. Here there we go. are. Hey, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, hey, my name is Dr. Marvinetta Clay, you know, the love child. And um, I'm sorry, I was sitting here watching somebody's door, hit somebody's door, and they was getting ready to drive off. So I'm just watching to see if he's going to 
smooth because he says he see I'm seeing him. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is I, look. Got to protect your cars. We're supposed to be trying to tear you up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Marvinetta Clay. You all can find me on all the social media outlets uh, under Marvinetta Clay, Clay Marvinetta, Dr. Marvinetta, Worship Forever. Um, all of my websites, uh, Marvinetta Clay Music dot com and worship forever one dot com and of course all um, the music as well and then i also got a video get ready to drop not yet but it's on the way and i'm so excited to um god is so good so all is well I'm glad to be back on the show amen and with that being said i want everybody to do this favor for me make sure you go and share like the page Follow us, follow, uh, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure that you go to our podcast platforms where we just were added on to a few more podcast platforms. We're, we're still working on that title. They keep denying us, but we're going to keep on going. Then when we finally get that last that last part of the missing piece, we will be on all podcast platforms. But right now, we're on most of them. So make sure you go follow us like um all of our previous shows you'll get something out of it one thing i could say is no matter what happens you'll get something from our show so make sure that you go and follow us on all of those platforms and make sure you download the anointed radio app for 24 hour gospel follow us at the lv anointed radio on all social media platforms and if you want to send a, a financial blessing you could go ahead and cash app us at anointed radio network and be a blessing to anointed radio amen we we all do this for the f so if you want to support in our lives you could just be like hey this is for benzel because benzel be talking about the 90s baby this is for <laughs> Brittany marley because her last name marley and she related to bob marley down the line his fifth cousin and this for the love child yeah. because the love child she be just coming out here talking about how jesus you know i thank god amen so with that being <laughs> said um one thing that i want to form everybody is september save i have a few dates of some things coming up september 23rd and 24th we have the christian hip-hop cypher here in las vegas for the iheart radio festival it's going to be at unlv and at the west theater library um it's going to be some great thing we got mc nice miss tiffany uh the truth they're all coming out um it's going to be a great time, a lot of things happening. The first Christian event during iHeartRadio. So if you haven't got your tickets, make sure you go get your tickets at Eventbrite for the CC uh, Christian Hip Hop um, Cypher here in Las Vegas. Another thing that's happening that's going to be something interesting. Um, I don't know what I signed myself up for, but I signed myself up for it is the Ministers versus Musicians Basketball Charity Game. <laughs> Where oh, I'm on team minister, you know what I'm saying? I've been a minister for in these streets, <laughs> so but he ain't got no jumper though. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm gonna drink my water on that. <laughs> Amen. So us uh, us ministers are going against musicians. It's going to be at the Doolittle Park. Um, it is a breast cancer charity event where we're doing breast cancer awareness. We're going to raise money to be able to help a person dealing with breast cancer. Um, it's a great, it's a great, great event to be able to uplift somebody that's going through it. And ministers always have to show, you know, you know, the authority that God put on our, you know, our hearts and our minds because, you know, mu musicians think they control everything. It's beef. I'm just saying, I feel like, I feel like it's about to be a versus, you know, so I got to rep my team. I rep team Jesus, which represents team ministers. So we're going to win that basketball game. And there's a lot of other good ministers here in uh, town for this team and a lot of great musicians of Las Vegas. So make sure you check out October 1st tickets. I think it's like seven bucks um, at the Doolittle uh, Park here in las vegas the ministers versus musicians and there's a lot more things coming soon so stay 
tune. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and I guess we're going to go ahead and do our nice new game that that Miss Brittany's going to host today. All right. Of this or Let's that. This or that. Luckily, I came prepared, sir. <laughs> so, hey, be, hey, be ready so you don't got to get ready. Exactly. Word. So y'all know this or that. Rapid fire, rapid fire. Do your best not to try to explain your explanation. Just or your choice. Just come on, come on, come on. So you ready? Right. Start off very simple. All right. Cat or dog? Dog. Dog. <laughs> Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. Facebook. Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. At extrovert. I see that. Theme park or water park? Theme park. Theme park. Really? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Zoo or aquarium? Zoo. Zoo. <laughs> okay. Vanilla ice cream or chocolate? Vanilla. Vanilla. Okay. Uh, well, hmm. Cookies or cookies and cream or vanilla? <sighs> cookies and oh. cream. Cooks and cream. <laughs> okay, ice skating or roller skating? Roller, roller skating. skating. Y'all are like on the same page. Bowling or movies? Bowling. Movies. Basketball or football? Football. Football. Beach or lake? Beach. Beach. Okay, lake or cabin? Oh, you said lake or cabin? cabin. Like a snow cabin. Cabin. Yeah. cabin. Oh lake. no, no lake, lake, lake. Yeah, yeah. Um, cabin or beach? Beach. I'm from Cali. Beach. All right, come on, Doctor Marvinetta Clay. <laughs> what's that? I'm sorry, my phone got hot. It went out. I didn't. I didn't hear anything. So, what? What's the question? All right. So, beach or lake? This or that? Beach. Lake or cabin? Cabin. Cabin or beach? Beach. <laughs> All right, last one. Romantic or comedy? Comedy. Comedy. Are we in terms of movies? Yeah, in terms of movies. Comedy. Ooh. All yeah, day. Comedy. Comedy. Okay. Comedy. <laughs> Okay. All right, now this is the last one because it just popped in my head. If you are a horror person, either comedy or a horror film. Comedy because horror films be having demons. Yeah. Around. I don't want to be paid. I don't want to pay somebody to scare me. So I'll say right. <laughs> I don't want to have the dreams about it, you know, and they should know you got spiritual warfare at the end after watching a horror film and you, you over here running in the infinite hallway with somebody chasing you. See, that's a demon. Nope. Comedy. <laughs> when I was younger, anytime I watched a, a scary movie, I would have to watch something funny after it just so I could go to sleep. I still got to do that. <laughs> I still got to do I'm that. I'm not going to lie to nobody. I got I'll put like a cartoon funny. or something. I'll put something funny on because it, it, it seems to erase out your mind when you watch something that's Funny or or stupid or something or the Animal Channel because it's wait, wait, season, really quick. It really is quick. Leo season. Just to let you know that. And, and I want to ask everybody this: What is your favorite uh, comedy movie? Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights is my movie. That's a good one. <laughs> Harlem Nights. Yeah, Harlem Night. that is a good one. Della Reese all day. Yep, I mean that hash. Yeah. <laughs> I crack up at that scene every time. Oh, you want to shoot me in the pinky toe. Right. <laughs> that has it or let me have him. <laughs> Man, you know it's crazy because yeah. like I like rush hour. Like that's like that's up there. But I think of comedies, I probably would say coming to America. Probably be my, my I was my, thinking about that one. one. Yeah. The first one or the second one? Oh, the Ooh. first one, of course. First one, of course. Ooh. Oh. The second Ooh. one. Boy. Ooh. Ooh. Lord. Ooh. <laughs> it was okay. It, the second one was okay, but I like the first one better. <laughs> I, I I will say this though. So, would you put Coming to America over Nutty Professor? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about Life? Oh, Life is my movie. Ooh, that's <laughs> Life or Coming to America. 
But see, that's not fair because you had Martin Lawrence on one end, and then on the other yeah. end, you had um, uh, what's his name? Um, Arsenio Hall. Arsenio Hall, but they're both at Eddie Murphy, and they yeah. all three of them are funny. So it, it's kind of hard. Man, if it's I was life. Sit and watch one, it, I would choose Life. Because Life has Bernie Mac in it, Rick James in it. Um, yeah, that's not fair. It's too, it's too too many other comics in there. I would the evil, life. the evil Dave Chappelle, which they everybody don't know his real name. The one who played Can't Get It Right. Oh, I know you're talking about. <laughs> I know you're talking about. They said uh, that that's, uh, that's Dave uh, Chappelle's Amari Woodbine or something like that. Woodbine. Yeah. The one who yeah. played Can't Get Right. So yeah. one thing I, I, I want everybody to kind of think about. So everybody knows what we're talking about. Trauma. Trauma equals drama. Because when you don't deal with your trauma, it usually comes out to be very dramatic and drama filled environments situations and all this drama comes out and everybody in love to say i don't like dealing with no drama well the person who's causing the drama mostly has a trauma that hasn't been identified or dealt with and it's kind of like the us as christians should be understanding that when that person is cussing you out when that person is doing this it ain't about you if you could take out that situation that you're sitting here being offended First of all, as a Christian, you shouldn't be so easily offended because people are going to hate you. People are going to talk about you. People are going to treat you wrong due to that you picked up the blood stain banner and that you declared that you are a Christian. So with that being said, when you see somebody, God is assigning that person to you. So if you, this person's going off on you, you should be praying for them, not in entertaining with them because sometimes it's kind of it's kind of like going into the level of hey you know i'm not going to stoop to your level a lot of times when you stoop to your level you're you're bringing on their issues and their problems into your own life that has nothing to affect or deal with you you let them change you and you're supposed to be the change for them to bring them to a person hey that could change the world amen so with that being said and just the opening statement with that what do you guys think about first trauma and how it's tied to drama hmm. i'm gonna let one of y'all go first on that okay <laughs> um trauma how it's tied to drama um well I mean, first, you know, we have to kind of dive into what dra what trauma is. And trauma could be from an, a past experience, a current experience, um, uh, lessons that you might have learned going through life. Um, and it might play into your life as from a child going up to being an adult, which it could cause drama in that sense. Whereas in because as a child or as a younger adult, you deal with, you know, uh, a a, tra a trauma that is, um, it could affect you when you're, you're, you're when you've grown up, and now it's causing drama in your life because you're trying to, I guess, not really compensate for it, but you're you have like a wall, kind of built up uh, due to that trauma, and so it could affect you in your your relationships, uh, not just not just you know you know uh, you know wife or husband or or boyfriend and girlfriend, it's like friend relationships, um, core groups, uh, church family. Um, you might have had a situation where, uh, you know, uh, you were you were younger and you were touched as a child. And now, you know, you're trying to be loved, you know, but you don't really know how to because it's 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 giving you so much trauma as a kid that now you're you're creating drama in your life. Not purposely sometimes, but also sometimes it might just be uh, kind of, uh, you know, wired into you. Um, also, have you, you guys ever heard of that, that situation where like an elephant when he was a child? They locked his foot, so like he couldn't move. You ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -mm. Well, explain basically it. What they say, it down. Yeah. So basically, what what happens is as as a li like a a little elephant, they lock his foot down so that he can't move, so that when he's older, and they're trying to you know like detain him, that is, they put that little lock on his foot, even though the elephant is strong enough to break that lock because of the trauma of him trying to break it when he was a child and couldn't do it as a big elephant. Now he can't break that lock mentally, physically he can, but he doesn't know that. And so that's kind of how I would think how that relates to it. 
Mm-hmm. So pretty much trauma can be a place where you kind of lock in a situation um, or pretty much just in a spiral of itself where, um, you know, sometimes people that's in trauma don't get the help that they need because folks don't believe or even um, want to help them. Um, to the point where they land up in certain places, you know, like the mental ward, the mental homes, and all on type of, you know, psychotropy medicines and different things that um, possibly they shouldn't even be on. But trauma, to me, that that, that causes drama is, (laughs) wow, that causes drama is, um, it could be a host of anything. For, for, For instance, like I could say, possibly that um, because my dad um, always, and I mean, this may not be trauma, but to some people, but it could be because it caused drama later on in the life, right? So um, my dad possibly um, promised a lot of things and always said they're going to do some things. And because of that letdown um, later on in life, I got to a point where I'm like, don't promise me anything. So that causes me not to trust people. That causes me not to believe in people. And that's, that can be a trauma by itself because even in a relationship, you're trying to build something and you can't build anything because you have, like you said, a wall that will cause you not to tunnel through or to even feel like this is somebody you can be, you know, trustworthy of. Um, trauma can be anything. It can be, it can be abuse. It can be verbal abuse. It can be anything. And yeah, um, if a person doesn't get the help that they actually need or um, be diverted in a positive way um, to overshadow those traumas, then, yeah, it will cause a whole lot of drama in their lives. And um, then you want, and then some people don't even know sometimes what they're doing and why they're caught, why these things are, why their lives are going the way it's going, um, because they never really, they really never acknowledge the trauma that they have experienced or went through or anything like that because, um, you know, sometimes people are just in denial or or they don't put so much under the rug that they never, you know, really, you know, got the true understanding of what they actually been through. And so to me, trauma can, can be anything, like I said, but it can bring a whole lot of drama in your life. And it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what culture you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It's just drama, period. That's that's my take on it. Amen. Amen. I'm not really for more personal notes. <laughs> um, I'm not really a drama person, but I can say that I have experienced certain amounts of trauma. Um, for instance, so as a little girl or a child, me and my sister, it's just me and my sister. And because of who, I'm just going to say it. I don't know if these people are watching. It is what it is at this point. But because of who my parents are, um, we as children got a lot of hate. We got treated differently. It was always every time we approached some, um, like these are grownups that I'm speaking of, not children, not their kids. These are the grownups. So every time we walked into a room or we would walk up, it was always, oh, here come them Marley girls. Here come them Marley girls, like a stank, (laughs) a stank attitude about it. And so when we play with their kids, they always treated us differently. It was always stank looks, stank attitudes, just all this stuff. And so naturally I'm the younger sister, They say the younger sisters are crazier. I'll take the title. It is what it is. I was more of the protective one. Now, the grownups who were babysitting us, who saw these other grownups treating us like this, they weren't saying anything. Nobody was standing up for us. Nobody was taking up for us. And so I took it on the took it upon myself to protect me and my sister. So therefore, I became labeled as the mouthy one. I became labeled as, oh, Brittany, that's the mean one. But then at the same time, it's like y'all created her. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so I wasn't full of drama. It just became, um, I wasn't disrespectful. But at the same time, I'll tell you, I heard my dad tell my mom one time, you don't have to accept anything from anybody. 
And I took that to heart. I overheard it. I took that to heart. It was like, I don't have to accept y'all treating me and my sister like this. I don't know what your issue is. I'm a child. It is what it is. I don't understand. So I guess, like I said, I got labeled as the mouthy one. I got labeled as the mean one. And those labels like followed me all throughout up until high school. But and then it was kind of like, like my family members, some of my family members would introduce me to like their girlfriends or boyfriends or friends, whoever, as the mean one. Like that's how I got introduced. But like I said, because I always defended me and my sister, I felt like I had to be the one to defend us. And I don't necessarily know if that's trauma, but it is something that has stayed. Well, it kind of has stayed with me now. I'm just a lot calmer now. Um, I have the Holy Spirit now. Um, he has let me know that I don't have to fight every single battle by myself. He has taught me how to keep my mouth shut. But it's just like the way you treat people, it travels. It carries. It stays and sticks with people. And even to this day, you know, they may not they may not think about what how they were treating us. They may not really care. I don't, I don't know, but stuff like that that sticks. So I have to to be able to talk about that cuz I feel like that is a a stigma that a lot of people get into um from childhood to now is that they'll see someone standing up for themselves. It's kind of like the person that gets push, 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 push. And then when the person goes off and acts crazy and, and, and really goes outside of character, they're like, man, do you see how they are? And I could relate to that due to the fact that I used to be the one that a lot of people, honestly, they still talk bad about me. I'm a preacher. I did all these great things and they still see me as the person that was before, or they won't have nothing new. They talk about the old, like, oh, mm-hmm. you remember Jaylon did this. They remember Jaylon did that. And and it's always in a negative connotation. So it's it's not never anything like, oh, did you see? Or, did, you know, it's always something negative, which um, used to make me bitter. Because I used to be a person that if you can't beat them, join them. So if you want to call me a bully, I'll become a bully. If you used to call me aggressive, I'm, I'm going to show you aggressive. If you want to call me petty, I'll be petty. That was my childhood upbringing because i was always labeled these things i I remember even being told that i'm going to either end up dead or in jail or strung out somewhere because of what i was doing and this is an adult telling a kid this Mm -hmm. close and the sad part about it it's it's, um instead of speaking life or speaking that you know you're going down a bad path but you you're smarter than this you're better than this it was always something negative or something about oh you ain't this or you ain't that which unfortunately i could talk about let's let's, we, we could break this down it's it's a cultural thing too because unfortunately in our culture, we believe in talking about people more than uplifting people. We believe in having all these negative things. We can't never say nothing nice. It's always a sidebar to it. And then when someone gets an attitude or, you know, they want to brush it under the rug instead of address the situation. And that's something that causes trauma and then brings drama because now you feel that every time I'm the drama is that you feel that I have to defend myself. Mm-hmm. I have to always explain myself. I always got to be in the mode where if this person comes at me this way, I got to defend myself this way where you get in this survival mode where you're not really truly being able to relax. It's like you get tensed up, you get all like in these situations, which are triggers, And unfortunately, with triggers is that when you're going through things and you're triggered, you usually take it out on the people that don't deserve it. Because a lot of times, a lot of trauma isn't addressed. And the quote that I saw the other day was that when you don't address the the, the trauma that you have, you frequently will cause that same trauma to other people. Due to the fact that it's it's like it's just like you're spreading a seed of of just trauma and drama. Like you used to be abused as a kid, and I'm not talking about sexual. There's all kind of different abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse, or whatever. And I didn't see people abu- get abused as a kid, 
by their parents. They hated how they was and then became worser than their parents. Uh, yes, I said worser because I just feel like that needs to be in the dictionary. Worser than their parents with their kids, which didn't make sense because it's like you get so far removed in, in a selfish mode where you don't even see the actions that you're doing to, uh, to other people, to your spouse, to your kids, to your friends. But also... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'll, I'll wrap it up then. So the main thing okay. I would just say to this with trauma and drama is that it is the I would say tr- trauma uh, drama is the by factor, uh, the byproduct of trauma. The, the trauma is the root. The branch is the drama that's caused. And, and Ben, you did say something I want to address, too. There's a lot of people that had trauma. Um, and a lot of it isn't stemmed in church, but church get a lot of flack for it where they get the tr- uh, drama. Uh, they get all this drama at home and they take it out at church or they have had a situation where they they're not used to having a person to hold them accountable. Um, and then when they're held accountable, they automatic, automatically seem it like it's shade or it's like a, a tack or something. And then they're automatically writing off church. All church people are like this. But let me break it down like this. And, and someone told me this when I was a kid and it made so much sense. If somebody cares for you, they're going to tell you something about it. If you like it or not, if it's for the betterment of your well-being. You might not like it in that moment, but it's it's something because they care, because if they didn't care, they'll let you do whatever. If, if, if it's just kind of like the analogy I used to say when um, a child is trying to run in the street after a ball. Right. All they're focused on right now is that ball. I want to get my ball. It went in the street. I'm going after it. But they don't see the car that's coming down the street. So when they. When somebody is grabbing them, what do most kids do? They're they're wiggling, they're they're mad, they're crying, they're they're having a whole fit because they're like, "Why are you holding me back? Why are you doing this?" And I just want to get my ball. They they're understanding logic of that. It's like what's happening, and then the car comes. Then they understand it. A lot of times we have those moments, and I'm including myself, where someone's telling you. You shouldn't do that, man. You you shouldn't you shouldn't involve yourself with this or you should slow down or you should do this. And you're like, nah, bro, I want to go get the money. I want to get the bag. I'm, I want I, I want to do this. I love her. I love him. All these situations happen. But then we don't we ask people to be friends. We ask people to be uh, a, a counsel, a wise counsel surrounding us. But then when it comes down to us listening, a lot of times we have that problem, which comes from trauma especially if you ain't got a real good relationship with your parents. Let's just be honest. You can't, you can't, (laughs) if you didn't take instruction from your parents, you definitely not going to take instruction from a friend or or some type of thing. And and it goes back into respecting your elders, because what was the whole reason for respect your elders? It wasn't just because somebody older could tell you what to do. It was because they were supposed to pass down the wisdom to you so that you didn't have to go and bump your head on the same walls that, they went and bumped their head on. But that's a whole thing um, where trauma comes when people have some type of resentment, unforgiveness, and things that have not been dealt with. And unfortunately, and just to be real, black people, we do this a lot and we don't we don't address it. We sweep it under the rug and we put this fake smile on and we don't address the situation that needs to be addressed. And then we get animosity or this uh, passive aggressiveness and it doesn't get solved. And if we would have just solved it, ripped the bandaid off, I really feel like a lot of things could get better, but that's my pr- opinion. I digress. Open it back up to the room. Yeah. Um, you know, to your earlier point and also kind of to this point as well, um, you know, growing up, I never really knew my dad at all. Uh, I know I would have conversations here and there with him. Um, You know, we didn't really get like a close, I guess, relationship until I got a teenage. Um, But um, dealing with what you were saying before, there's also another side of it. You know, you can either take that past trauma and you can either be, like you say, worser at it, or you can be better, right? And so for me, 
and uh, having kids, you know, I think the reason why I'm so good with my kids and I want to be, I want to be the best father I can is because of my past trauma with my dad, because I saw how situations, uh, not just with the uh, young men, but young black men that don't have their fathers around. Um, I mean, that's a subject for another day, but you know, it's essential uh, for us to have a male, uh, not just black, but any type of male model uh, around uh, to kind of teach us the how to be men, how to be uh, uh, grown men, how to deal with situations when you go older. But I think that's part of the reason why I'm such a good dad now is because I know what it's like. I know I was that kid that was longing for my dad to be there. I was that kid that would only know my dad through a conversation on the phone we would have once a month. I was that kid where I felt the pain and the and the trauma of not having a dad there. And so with my kids, I never want that to happen. That's why, you know, when my my daughter's saying she's having a, 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 a situation where she's uh, she's going through it at school or a situation where, you know, she wants to be in some type of club. I'm there to support her. My son, too. He's three. Everything that he's doing, you know, I support him in that because I feel like I never want my kids to feel the way that I felt. So in some cases, it's your it's kind of your choice to see what drum what past trauma could do. It can either mold you into the person that you are positively or it can mold you negatively as well. So that's why that's what I was trading to that. Amen. I feel like y'all oh, had I, something I, to say. I was just right. No, um, you know, I I just just sit here thinking, and it was good that what he mentioned in his very last part of his, his um, comment to where he said that it can either either evolve you into something positive or something negative, and um, and I know the world, you know, always places more more on negativity than they do any positive anything. And so it's really up to, to me, I believe it's up to the individual. And um, just like, you know, you were just talking about um, your father wasn't in, you know, his presence really wasn't there in your life and how you took that on to do better for your children. And um, if, if a lot of people would take, take on that kind of stance where, you know, a lot of people think that there's generational curses and they think that is, um, you know, because daddy did it, because mama did it to me, I'm going to do it to this. And it don't have to be that way. It can stop with you. And that's the message that has that needs to go out to people to let them know that even though they went through this, this trauma, they went through this, this hardship, they went through something that they really did not deserve, um, they don't have to live that life. They don't have to have that that uh, shadow over them no more, and that they can break through. They can break, you know, they, they can break that whole chain uh, from them. They don't have to live like that or live in it for the rest of their life. But the problem is, is that people are not preaching that, people are not speaking that, people are not giving those positive um, tools or positive sayings, and letting letting people know that even though you went through it, that doesn't mean you have to stay in it. That doesn't mean that you have to live it that doesn't mean that you know who, who's ever next to you you know how some some people say you know you don't want this because this really wasn't for you this was meant for somebody else you know how they talk like that but um on the same token you don't want to give it no way because at the end of the day uh when a person is trying to do something because of something that they've experienced it don't do number but put more coals and more fire onto your life that's really what it really does and I just really believe that even in my own situation, yes, my dad was in my life, um, although he passed away at 17, but he died from cirrhosis of the liver, alcoholic, you know, that was pretty much heavy in my family, on my father, on my, on all the men, on my dad's side. And um, it, it took, a, it hit hard as a young girl, it hit hard as not having their, her father, somebody who was a daddy's child. And although my dad, you know, made a lot of promises and said he was going to do stuff and was going to come through. And, you know, the intent was there, you know, everything was there. And, and as a young girl, you don't understand that let down, you know. Um, and even to the point where your own mama keep telling you, your daddy ain't nothing but a liar. Your daddy ain't this. So, you know, trauma can come from the very closest people that you are around. It can come from anybody. And like I said, it ain't got to be a, a, um, 
it, it doesn't have to be something that's like an altercation or anything of of um I'm trying to think of the word, but anyway, it could, it could be verbally, and verbally can be just as bad as anything else, because it's set so heavy in the mindset, in the brain, in your heart, and so um, for me, I had to learn as a young girl coming up that, you know, everybody ain't bad, everybody, you know, just because they say some things, you know, I'm still to the day, I still have a problem with it to the point where I don't want you to tell me you're going to do something, don't do it, and and it's just that I just feel like if you're going to be a woman or a man of your word, just do it, you know. And if you can't do it, say you can't do it, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, to the point where um, did it leave a little stigma? Yeah, it actually did. And uh, But I'm I'm better today because right now it's to the point where, I, you know, I'm, I'm like this. People are going to be people and they're going to do what they're going to mm-hmm. do. So I don't worry about that part no more, you know, because life goes on to the point where, you know, can I help somebody else? Most definitely I can help somebody else um, to let them know that, hey, you don't have to keep going through this. You can come out of it. There is hope. There is positive freedom. There's freeness. You know, you got light Amen. at the end of this tunnel, yeah. you know. Amen. So that's what we have to do. Even, I mean, I don't care if it's the worst of the worst of trauma. You know, we have to continue to um, give positive feed into people's lives. And that's the problem that we're running into because people are not doing it. A lot of folks are just letting folks be where they're at, they're letting them stay where they're at, and, and they, they forget how God brought them out. So that's just me. You know, I'm just saying. Right. And so, like, I don't want to make it seem like it's so easy to overcome trauma. Like, get it together, fix it up, do what you need to do. So for somebody who is still struggling to overcome these things, like for you guys, what were or is some of the steps that you take to actually overcome some of the trauma? Like Ben, I know you said you went the opposite way of your dad. Um, You are actually there for your kids. But before you even got to that place, were you, when you were younger, did you just make up in your mind that this is how I'm going to be? But like, what were the actual steps? And did you see yourself falling back into maybe some of the ways of your dad and had to overcome those? Or was it just squeaky clean? Because I don't think anything is squeaky clean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, as a child, um, I, I got to give an enormous, enormous respect to my mother um, because you know, being a single black mother with two boys, um, raising um, them into men, it's a, it's a situation where um, I wouldn't be able to make it without her. You know, it, it, it was kind of the situation where she was the one teaching me, you know, this is how you should treat women. Uh, this is how you should treat yourself. This is how you should conduct yourself. And for what it's worth, you know, I thank her for that even to this day, because mm-hmm. uh, we, you know, growing up, you know, I, I was a very fun loving person because of her. And she always kept me in church. Always. My grandmother too. I mean, I remember one time I was I was in bed and um grandma she 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 tapped me and she said, she said, Benny, get up. We ready to go to church. And I was like, I don't want to go to church. She's like, You go into church. Mm-hmm. You need this. And I wanna say for me, my mom pushing me to stay in church to keep God first, to understand that situations, even though you have uh you not have your dad in your life, it doesn't mean you have to be that way. You know, uh, keep me in the Bible, have me encouraged to, to keep going and, and just still seeking God, even at a young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, me personally, you know, as a, as a young person, that is, I, I, was, I was very disciplined, but sometimes I was very hard headed. And to see the fact that my mother, you know, what she did for me as being hard headed, but continue to stick with it, continue to pray for me, continue, my grandmother, my aunties, continue to pray for me. You know, I, 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 I say that maybe I didn't have a dad at that particular time, but I had a heavenly father. And mm-hmm. for what it's worth, uh, with all that going on, that's what I relied on. That's where I that's where the the, the, the start and finish, even to this day. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, God rest the soul of my dad. But but my heavenly father was there for me. And so it was kind of the situation where you rely on God when situations go where, you know, you're you're backed up against the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know you don't know where to go you don't have that male figure to tell you what you need to do you know you sit down you pray you see god you get in your word uh, as as a young person i know 10 now today in these in these days ages now they're not preaching that 
it's kind of a situation where, oh, it's all about uh, being a rapper, getting money and doing all this type of stuff. But at the end of the day, even the even those rappers, even those people that are in the secular world, the first thing they say, they give honor to God. You know why that is? It's because of the child. As a child, when you didn't have a father, you had a heavenly father and you knew about that. And so for me, that's that's where I kind of kept myself grounded and understood, you know, how to kind of get to the level that I am as a dad today. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, um, I guess I would say to interject onto that is that I had to stop saying things without understanding the depth of it. And one thing I used to always say is I didn't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be like my dad. I want to be, I wanted to be better than my dad. I wanted to be a better example of a man. I wanted to be a, a great husband. I wanted to be a great father. I wanted to be all these things. And I kept saying, I wanted to be all these things, but not understand what my genetic makeup is and my behavior of what I was brought up in. Because if you don't know you, you could say all everybody that I've known that's always said, I'm not trying to be like my mother. I'm not trying to be like my father. They said that and became just like them because they didn't identify what's within them. What is what is some traits that's similar? Can you did you identify your similar traits? You might be a procrastinator like your mother. You might be super uh, aggressive like your father, which brought the reasons why they made the decisions that they made due to the fact of their traits. Your traits come from both mother and father. And if you say that I don't want to be like them, you got to be able to say, okay, then what's that trait? Am I being over overzealous right now? Am I being um, too overbearing right now? Well, that's okay. That's my father's trait. Let me let me ramp that back. Let me when I when I see myself get like that, um, let me be able to you know de- defer to a different thing. Oh, um, am I being too too um, too much? Let's just simply put it like that. Am I doing too much? Um, that's, that's another trait. Let me be able to defer from that and, um, sometimes be quiet because, you know, I, I know I came from a family where we're very over, um, I guess you could say over talkative when it comes down to, um, saying our point where a lot of times, like my grandmother used to always say, everything doesn't deserve a response. And I didn't know that that was even biblical until I read the Bible for myself and saw that there's a time to speak and there's a time to be quiet. And I always was the one that had to say something, but there's power in not saying something. And when you don't say something, you actually listen and you could be able to see the points of certain things of how to move a lot of times it's not just to listen sometimes it's just for you to re- kind of um direct your thoughts so that you're not just going based off impulse because i mm-hmm. most of my childhood and t- even to early adulthood it was based off impulse oh you ain't gonna tell me what to do i'm gonna say the last word you ain't gonna shut me up you ain't gonna do this and it was drama it was straight drama because i was always easy to be offended easy to go off on somebody easy to it was just so easy to do all these things to let somebody get the best of me and it was all due to the traumas that i was having but i was because i kept lying to myself keep saying i ain't nothing like them i yeah you are just like them you come from them but you have to understand how to use your traits in the best light, not always the negative light. You only might have seen the negative light, but then understand that, yeah, there is a time to speak up. Yeah, there is a time to be straightforward. Yeah, there is a time for these things. You shouldn't always just rely to it for the negative. And I feel like once you understand yourself, you understand these things, you can break that generational curse. All the things that you might think is bad from your parents might not be a bad trait, but they're used in the bad in a bad situation and a bad timing and in these situations where you shouldn't use them. Uh, Addictive personality, which let's talk about it, you know, addictive personality in in the community, in the black community, addictive personality is very, very common, where if you know that you have an addictive personality because of traits, you know, in your family that 
people from the crack ep- epidemic knows that their family had had people that used drugs or alcohol or even being addicted to sex or any type of food, gluttony, all these things. There's you have you know that in your family you have an addictive personality. That means that you have to guide yourself with responsibility and be like, I know I can have an addictive personality. So I can't just dive into this. I can't just because shopaholic is addictive personality. If y'all want to be real, it ain't got to be just drugs and alcohol or anything in that being a shopaholic and wondering why your money always gone. Huh? I'm talking to myself. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody else in the room, but I'm talking to myself. Having that bad money management is an addictive personality. Having a drug habit is an addictive personality. We talk about the product of the addictive personality, but we don't talk about actually having it. So what does that mean? And what does it look like to have that addictive personality? It means that you're going to, to do irrational things for whatever that addictive thing that you're you're looking for so is it's is knowing more and i'm just using addictive personality but there's, there's plenty of more being over emotional uh being super um ready to cut people off. oh god i can't stand that one ready to cut everybody off i'm just gonna cut everybody off but realizing that you're gonna end up alone and then next you know it you you have nobody to interact with. Humans were never made to be alone because even God said it was it was bad for man to be alone. That's why he made Eve. Companionship, relationship, having people around you is a human human anatomy. You put somebody in isolation or, or in a hole in jail, you'll see them go crazy easily because they need interaction no matter what. So understanding yourself, yeah, it causes the drama. You know, the drama is the symptom. The drama, when somebody's causing drama, always causing drama, that's the symptom. The illness is the trauma, but you have to identify those things so that you could be able to know how to move forward. So what do y'all think about that? I think that, again, (laughs) um, I don't know what it is that is moving on my heart right now, but I think that, like I said, again, everything is not always that as it's not always that simple and I feel like it's just coming off or sounding like it just is that simple when you talk about addictive personality anger issues and all of these things I think it's easy to say well take a look at yourself get to know yourself or whatever but sometimes like those addictive personalities those anger issues the emotional stress those things I feel like some people need help (laughs) from Jesus like to surrender, like you have to start surrendering that stuff and actually start to pray and actually start to spend time with Jesus so he can reveal you to you, so he can help you. I have prayed um, for certain situations within my personal life where I have literally prayed for God to send me help because in my flesh, I can't do that, whether it's the Holy Spirit, but he has physically sent a person in my life in this time to to help me, to hold me accountable, to pray with me, to pray for me with certain situations I'm going through. So I don't think that it's always easy to say, know yourself, do X, Y, and Z, do this. It's hard, especially um, if you've been conditioned a certain way, like you say trauma, like you've went through all these things with your family, Maybe a friend did something to you. Maybe the church did something to you. And all of a sudden you have a wall. You have this built up emotion that you feel like you have to constantly be defensive or you feel like um, because some things are generational. Some things come down and you don't have to. You can. It is a choice. You don't have to choose to go down that same path. But at the same time, some things are spiritual. Something a lot of things are spiritual spirits attach. That's just what they do. They go from you to me to you if you're in and around that person. So some things you need to surrender over to Jesus. That's just my advice for me personally. What I have learned in my life is a lot of things you can't talk about with other people. I mean, I have the best parents in the world. My sister is my best friend. My sister knows most of the things about me, but some things You can't talk about with other people. Some things they just don't understand uh, based off if you know that person and their personality. Like my mom, 
some things she won't be able to handle, okay? So I know that just using her as an example, I know that I can't talk to you. Jesus, for me, is my best friend. And I get if you don't know him yet, you don't know that. But like I always say, he talks to everybody. The Holy Spirit speaks to everybody. It's just a matter of you sitting down and taking the time and be like, it's simple. Jesus, I don't know if you're real. Holy Spirit, I don't know if you are a real thing. I don't know what this is. But if you are, can you please speak to me? Can you show yourself to me? And I even uh, pray that prayer like, Lord, let me see your glory in this. You know, un let me help me understand this. Help me understand who I am, because I do have some of the trauma. And uh, <laughs> Pastor Jay, in our uh, personal conversations, I'm pretty sure that you could probably see it as in when you're always trying to tell me who I am and who I can be and all these things that you see in me. Some of that trauma comes from either people saying, well, Brittany is but she's not. Either they're telling me I'm not enough or they think that I'm better than what I think that I am, not knowing that I have been insecure for the majority of my life. You know what I mean? Stuff that Jesus is working with you on. And it's not always so easy to be like, recognize who you are and step into your calling and do all this. It's like work <laughs> to get over that and to constantly renew your mind and change those mindsets. So I, like I said, I don't want for the viewers or the watchers, I don't want to come off like, it's just a simple black and white thing or just because you're a Christian, it should be so easy. When you're a Christian, I feel like it's, it, it's harder. Not trying to deter anybody from, you know, accepting Jesus and all this stuff. But do not believe the lie of the enemy or the lie of anybody around you that tells you that once you take on that blood stained banner, mm -hmm. once you accept Jesus into your life, that it's the smoothest, easiest ride ever. No, the enemy attacks you more. That's why you surrender to, to Jesus daily that's why you stay in his presence there's nothing wrong with asking um jesus to send you help like i said i that's how i surrender like lord i can't do this i'm in my flesh i i'm i'm being defensive right now i don't want to really talk to anybody body right now i have a habit of going into seclusion sometimes if we want to be transparent from trauma um sometimes i don't want to deal with people <laughs> that's just what it is. Sometimes I don't feel like talking to you. And so it's like when I don't feel like talking to anybody else or I can't or I feel like I'm struggling with the thing, I can say that Jesus has been my best friend. So that's that. Um it to to, to mm -hmm. kind of to kind of go off that as well. Um for me, you know, how I not to, you know, to, to go off on people is that I got I got to remember who I am first. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, when they, when, like she said, when you get in your flesh, sometimes you forget, you know, when you get in your flesh, sometimes you need that, that added bone, that added uh, push to say, Hey, you know, remember who you are, remember what you stand for, remember who you're representing at the end of the day. Um, for me, you know, not to kind of, you know, to go off on people, I have to think of where God's brought me from. And I have to understand that, we're all sinners saved by grace. We've all come from a past where we might not have handled situations the way that we wanted to, but he's faithful and just to forgive us for those type of situations. So for me, you know, I have to kind of understand that I'm not perfect. Um, you know, uh, uh, Brittany, you said, you know, you have to sometimes go into uh, seclusion. Sometimes you have to kind of distance yourself. You can't always talk to uh, the person you want to talk to. Sometimes the only person you can talk to is God. Uh, I feel like I'm the same way. Whereas in, you know, when I'm getting angry or when I'm getting upset or when I'm getting having a situation where I don't feel like I'm strong enough, I'm, I'm in my flesh, you know, I have to turn to God because there's some situations where you're just, you're not there yet. You know, and it, you ever that saying like you're saved, but you're not delivered. And so sometimes you're not fully delivered. Sometimes you have to be honest with yourself and say, hey, I'm not fully delivered by this, but you're, you're seeking God and saying, hey, God, I'm not delivered on this. I need help. You know, it's it's nothing wrong. And, it, and I hate that the, the church makes it seem like something's wrong with you by saying you need help. I thought that for church, that's where you go to to get the help. Right. You know, and so for for, for me and, and maybe for, for y'all as well, I feel like as church people, if we call ourselves Christians, that is, it's a situation where we come in with non-judgment, understanding that not everybody's perfect. Not everybody's going to handle situations the way that, you know, they feel like, but also, you know, kind of teaching them about what God says in the word. You know, understanding that, you know, you know, you never you, you don't you don't have to like your neighbor, but you, you have to love them and coming from a place of love. Uh, I feel like could help you out, you know, when you get into that that place of 
bubbling over, trying to, you know, you know, if you get angry, you know, understanding that, you know, God loves you. So you should love as well. Amen. Salvation is a daily thing to say, to go back to the salvation. Like when people ask, well, when were you saved? If the answer, I, I even heard somebody else say this. The answer is today. <laughs> you know what I mean? The last time I was saved was today. The last time I had to renew my mind was today. It's like a daily thing. It's not, um, you know, confessing with your mouth. It's not just that. It is a daily walk, a daily thing. And I feel like if we all come into it, knowing that there's not a person on this earth walking without trauma or living without trauma, I think we could be more sensitive to them. We can approach it uh, better. You know what I'm saying? We can just help each other. I think that's just my thing. It's like the judgment has got to go, like you said, Ben, and we have got to lead with love because we are all dealing with trauma. We are all living with trauma. Like you said, saved but not delivered. You're not going to be delivered from every single thing before it's time for you to be with Jesus. So it's like a daily walk. Let's help each other. Pray. Like I said, there are things some people are on medication to go, you know, go over things. There's nothing wrong with medication. There's nothing wrong with therapy. Um, but for me, Jesus is always the answer that he is the end all be all like he is the answer to help you deal with this trauma to help you see the drama that you're causing in your own life nobody will make you see yourself better than jesus <laughs> like he is the best one to tell you who you are show you how you're acting he calls me out on stuff all the time but again it's relationship just sit down and start building that relationship so i'm sitting here right and i'm i'm, I'm praying and i'm talking because i'm like god oh, I wanted to know why you want to bring up this conversation. And he, and he gave me a, a parable, which was amazing. I know it's nothing but God, because I'm like, where did that come from? So when you're driving in a car and you pass a house, can you see every detail about that house when you're passing by? No. Nope. No, you just see the, you just see a house, right? But when you slow down, like with, when you're looking at the for sale sign and you really want to look at that house and you see the house, you can see the windows, you can see the detail, you can see the, the trim of the door. God does something that's so amazing. And I feel like we take it for granted and or we see it like, oh, God, why have you forsaken me? Sometimes God will slow you down because mm. I hear what you said, Brittany. But God gives you situations for you to see you. Because sometimes we get so sick of, like, I'm just sick of me. Uh -huh. Like I love that phrase, I'm just so sick of me. Because at the end of the day, you kind of tune yourself out. First of all, you don't have a mirror to look at yourself and how you act and how you deal with people. People see you, you see them. You don't see you. And a lot of times we don't look at self or even, even if it, because not to, for to answer your question to what you were saying earlier, how to identify it, write it down, write it down the situation and uh, of situation that to you should have went right, but it went wrong and, and really break down that situation and be like, why did this not go the way that I saw it going? Because we all have different perceptions. We all see things different. We see, I see this from my perception. You see it from your perception. And a lot of times we can't see the things that we do until we really slow down and really be like, no, I could have, I could have did that differently. I could have really identified that. Oh man, that sounded just like something my mom would say or something my dad would say, or, or man, this sounds like something that I heard somebody say to me. And I would, why would I say that if I didn't like that? Why would I do this if I wouldn't do this? Why did that come out? Was that because I heard it and I just thought that sounded cool? No. Like, these are the conversations you got to have with yourself. You're not talking to yourself, but you're analyzing and breaking down. That's why you should meditate on the word. Because when you come into meditating on the word and you really sit here and reflecting with yourself and you and God are having your, your talking time, you should sit here and be like this in me. There's some things that I have been seeing lately. It could have been yesterday. It could have been a month ago. It could have been a situation that somebody out there is still dealing with. And they're wondering, why am I still stressing about it? God's giving you that time to slow down and think about it. 
why I keep popping up? Why at three o'clock in the morning I keep thinking about what happened with me and my mama? Or why am I keep thinking about what happened with me in that situation back when I was younger? Because God's trying to show you you. The best way he could introduce you is by letting you like the, the one thing that I never want is God to slow me down so much because I put so many distractions in my life where he got to put me in somebody hospital. Because one thing that I could tell you being that I've been in a hospital before, the only thing that you can do is reflect. And have you ever noticed that when you're in a hospital room, they always point you to look up. And when you're looking up, you only got, you be like, God, I'm right here in this situation. And, and you came naked, you came and naked, you will go because you in that gown, you feel vulnerable and you sit here, God, I don't know what you want me to get from this, but I'm going to talk to you. And God will start flashing a whole lot of stuff in your life of things you take for granted, things that you just walk by, things you just sweep under the rug, all these different things. But it takes you to slow down and know you. Because if you don't know you, you're going to keep doing what you've been doing and see nothing wrong with it. But it has to come down to a point where you slow down and understand the things that you do so that you could be able to prevent it. And the only way you could prevent it is by identifying. That's why they tell you in AA meetings, the first step of recovery is identifying that you have a problem. And if yeah. you don't identify you have a problem, you'll never ever think that there's an issue go ahead miss Brittany. i, I was gonna one. say yeah that's what i mean that's what i meant like give people steps don't just say do this but like well let me know how because everybody doesn't have that quiet time with jesus everybody doesn't know jesus it's just kind of like uh like when you go to church and they're, and they're telling you oh be righteous be saved be all this and you giving me the same but tell me how tell me how to walk righteously tell me what i'm supposed to do like help me don't just tell me to do a thing tell me lead me guide me just like tell me how am i supposed to walk this saved life just don't tell me to accept jesus and be saved okay when i walk out the church doors what i'm supposed to do <laughs> do you know what i mean so i think that's what i mean i get what you're saying but it's like tell me give me a little bit more tell me how amen <laughs> and that's usually me saying that. well i think what i I think with all of that, um, it's it's all, how can I say, um, everything that, that God allows us to go through, it's all a learning tool. Mm -hmm. And whether um, whether we get it from somebody or not, the learning, the learning tools definitely comes from God, no matter how you look at it. Um, it's just the fact of people really recognizing it. I mean... I believe that God, when God said, you know, he, he, he never said that this life was going to be easy. There's going to be tests, trials, and tribulations. You know, there's things that we're going to go through. And the reason why we got to go through it is to make us who we, who we are designed to be, mm -hmm. who, has, who he has designed us to be from before we was in our mother's womb. And so a lot of things that we go through, um, he's putting us through it. But there's some awesome things that we go through that we put on our own selves. You know, and so, and I think uh, in all all fairness of it, regardless if we did it to ourselves and regardless if God did it to, for us to, to know who we are, it's still a part of making us who we have already been designed to be. And some people miss that mark because they don't want to go through the test. They don't want to go through the trial. It doesn't feel good. It, it, it's not meant to feel good. It is not. Um, but like you say, you do have to surround yourself around some people, uh, people that you're able to either release, um, be able to speak to, be able to. That's why suicide is so rapid, part of trauma. You know, that's why it's so rapid, because folks don't have no outlet. Um, yes, they trust in God, but yes, but yet their trust is kind of like shaky. Faith is shaky because of certain things. And so it becomes a part where, yeah, they it, on the, in their heart they trust them, but that overall man from their mind on down is in trauma. It's in turmoil. It's going through some situations. And even in that, only way some of the people that comes out is because, one is God ain't, ain't ready for you to come home, or two is he, he um, they, they get help. You know, like you said, folks have, some people just have to, get to a point to cry for help. No, it ain't it ain't easy.
I think what she was saying is it's not easy out here. <laughs> it's definitely not easy to be able to be in these streets. She's coming back. It's not it's not easy. She's still frozen, but she's here. It there was I a am. Kid. There you go. <laughs> I keep losing signal. I think that's a bad signal in the air right now. I done lost signal several times. <laughs> and you all have been talking and been coming in sounding like UFOs. So <laughs> it's, been, it's been like kind of hard here. I don't know what's going on in the air, but something's going on. And, uh, storms. But I'm just saying, yeah, that too, because it's, it's, it's ugly out here, you know. But I just believe that, you know, in all essence, it has to be a point, like you said, relationship. Yes, we have to have that relationship because uh, without a relationship with God, you kind of lost, and you really are lost. Just like you have a relationship with your mother and father, if you if you don't have a relationship with them, you know, mom and dad can't be the parents that they need to be over you, and that and then it's kind of like you know, kind of soured in a sense. But that relationship with God is so important to the point where he is our daddy. He is our father. He is the one that knows all about us. He is the one that sees all about us. He is the one that can heal. He is the one that can deliver. He is the one that can bring you through, bring you out, make a way. He is the one. The, the thing that comes in is where we, we lack in trust is trusting God wholly. And we only trust him a little bit. Where we're supposed to trust him wholly, put your trust in him. You know, let, lie in him. Let him handle it. Put your, put your, put your, what is it, uh, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. If you, mm -hmm. and, and I know those things says, and, you know, the people, like you said, it, it sounds more easier than what it is. Yeah, it does. But the thing of it is, is if you keep saying those things and affirming those things, it becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really does. It becomes a part of who you are. It becomes your life. It becomes really the way you live. You know, for God, I live, for God, I die. That's what people say. But then they, do they really know what that means? The thing right. is, is that you live in it, but are you really dying daily to, to your flesh? Because that's really what it really is. It ain't about you just dying going to heaven. It's about your flesh dying, you know. So I'm just saying, when it comes down to um, trauma, when it comes down to any, really thing, anything, actually, um, it's up to that individual to really take retrospect on themselves and be honest to themselves. Because a lot of folks don't want help. They feel like they got it all together. And that's where a problem comes. Where they got it all together, they, they superficial, they superhero, ain't nothing bothering them. But yet it is. There's an underline. There's trouble there, you know, but they don't want to see it. Only way they're going to see it, it has to be a God move, a God thing for them to actually see it. Those are the ones that they call the hard, hard knocks. Um, but I just feel like at the end of the day, over all things, God has everybody in his hands and in his control, and it's up to us to really just do what he said he wanted us to do, trust him, because he cares for us. Give it to him. He'll take care of it. Cast it to him. He'll make a way. It's just really that simple, honestly. And all you got, And when you get to that point, it's like, okay, God, I can't do nothing else about it, so you might as well go ahead and do it. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? But why do you have to get to that point when you could just go ahead and just let them have it? You know? So I'm just saying. Yeah. Hey, Amen. With, with, with that being said, to, to wrap everything up, if, if, if you're going through some things with trauma, address it now. Today is the day that's a perfect day to address it, to get help, to follow some steps. Start your first step. It could take baby steps, but follow your first step. Even if that first step is journaling, talking about how you feel, because a lot of times we deny ourselves of knowing what we've been going through because we just kind of go through life. So you could start journaling, knowing how your day's been. So you could be able to start reflecting and reviewing how things have been going, how you've been feeling and, and start getting out, praying, fasting, having some meditation time, get in a quiet place, put, put nothing on, sit there and talk to God. And you will be able to hear something, get all those distractions away and just really meditate and be able to get in that mode to talk to God without any distractions or anything rushing over your brain and get help. Have somebody to talk to professional help. Disclaimer, we're not any psychiatrist in here. There's a doctor in here, but, I, but she, she does counseling, but I, 
I'm not any physician, psychiatrist or anything. I'm just talking from personal experiences and things that I've been through that's helped me to be able to get to a better place of not always being angry, not always being offend, offended, not always ready to, to go off, not always. And I'm talking about things that I went through. These are just mm-hmm. lists of some things and I'm still working on it, but it's just, it's, it's better to be able to work on yourself daily and, and find that. Cause you'll, your, your, your goal is to be able to get that perfect peace and that perfect peace comes from God. And if you can learn how to stop messing up, that perfect peace that you have in your life that God's trying to give you, you'll start seeing life in a different light and you will protect your peace. You will protect the things that God give you and you will protect every, and you'll appreciate the things that God has given you in your life. And that, that, that sit down time and that quiet time, you will start to really yearn for it daily. So I definitely just say if um, that anybody else have any tips that um, the audience might um, could be able to use for the first steps to be able to address their drama that is caused by their trauma. I would just say definitely find somebody that you can trust and talk to um, because we always need that physical touch. We need somebody here on earth that we can actually, something tangible that we can actually have and talk to or someone we can talk to. But I would also implore you, if you don't know Jesus, um, to just give him a try. That's really all you have to do. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a certain way. You can be as messed up as they come because I know that I am and I'm pretty sure we all are. <laughs> um, so just my thing is just give them a try. Just try them out. Yeah, um, same thing. Um, oh, go ahead. Okay, so um, I, I was just going to say the same thing. You know, just um, continue. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know God, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody around you has has heard a word before um if you're, if you're dealing with situations like this um you know definitely you know like like Brittany said give them a try um un- and understand that you're not perfect um we're never we're, we all have issues we all have problems just because you might not be the the greatest person it doesn't mean that you're, you're not right for jesus so you know definitely give them a try understand you're not perfect i like that and all i'm gonna say all I'm going to say is um, for, for, for your first step, realize that you got a problem. That's the first step. Realize that you have an issue that is really going on. You may not know what it is right now, but it definitely will be shown. You'll know, you know. You might have been in denial for a long time, but start realizing that you got an issue and take ownership of it. Take ownership of it, and then you can reach out to God, talk to God, talk to Jesus, talk to somebody tangible, talk to whatever that is. But the first step, you got to realize you got an issue, because if you don't realize that you have an issue, you're going to continue to stay in that spiral, continue to stay in the place that you're at. So when you realize it, that's your first step, and then everything else will be added unto you. Amen. So, with that being said, you know what time it is. It's time to go, y'all. So, with that being said, with being time to go, make sure you download the Anointed Radio app. Make sure you follow us on the podcast platform where you can follow us at Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Tidal, uh, Jana, Jeevas, um, Podcaster. Um, all the podcast places out there. You could just Google all Anointed Radio Network, Anointed Radio Show Podcast. And we're on all those podcast platforms. We've actually won a communicator award for our podcast or award-winning podcast. So you can follow every show in the car, at work, at home, whenever. This interview, the next interview, and the thing I'll promise you right now, no matter what the interview is, you're going to learn something. So with that being said, make sure you go and download the Anointed Radio app. Bless us with a, a nice little cash app if you can. And make sure you uh, just follow us on all social media platforms at LV Anointed Radio and all social media platforms. Share, like, subscribe, and have a blessed day. And just know it's Leo season, the best season.
Amen. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Leo sees a stand up. Bye. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.